nice size little brook trout right there. What is up guys? This is Chad with Living the Van Life up here in Washington. Today's mission is to get up into the hills and shoot some photography. The whole reason that I bought this van in the first place back in 2010 was so that I had a vehicle to get out and shoot photography. That is today's mission. First step, A number one, I'm gonna get some fuel here in the van. I'm headed out into the hills for any length of time I always like to make sure that I've got a full tank of gas so this evening I am headed out the Mount Baker Highway which is Washington State Route 542 the Mount Baker Highway heads east out of Bellingham Washington from Interstate 5 and it runs about 40 to 50 miles and then dead ends at the Mount Baker ski area Fortunately, that ends up in some very beautiful scenery. Let's see if we can find some cool scenes. Hopefully some light reflecting off the little bit of clouds that are up in the sky right now. Hopefully it should be a good evening for some photos. thing about this whole scenario right now is that the clouds are all like stuffed up in the mountains down over the horizon where the sun's gonna set it's actually perfectly clear so what ends up happening in these scenarios is that the light as it's setting down on the horizon shoots across the lowlands up into the mountains reflecting beautiful sunset light off of the clouds that are stuffed up here in the mountains and when the stars all align and the angels of light shine down upon us that we have great, beautiful photos on our hands. Let's just pray that that happens on this time around because you just never know what exactly is gonna happen. After all, that's part of the journey, going out and hunting for photos. Actually one of my favorite spots up here on the Mount Baker Highway. The way the highway opens up over the canyon, the Nooksack River is right down below. This valley opens up back down towards the west where we just came from. The sunset oftentimes it'll shoot just beautiful light up the valley and it makes for some great, great light. It's always a gamble of where you're going to stop and spend your time to wait for the light. looking a little bland, but we still do have some time. Okay, well, let's see if our efforts paid off. You just never know until you get into these spots to find out if you've got something. Right up behind me here, half buried in the clouds is Mount Shucks and this lens right now doesn't do it justice, but that's uh, uh, hard to say if it's worth getting a shot here. Let's check it out. A little bit of light hitting those mountains over there, but as you can see the clouds are pretty 
dormant right now. Nothing really much going on in the sky, which is a little bit of a bummer. We raced up here to this spot to see what we could see. It's hard to say if something's gonna break loose at this point. I think it's pretty much done here. Judging by the light that's hitting on those mountains over there, there is a possibility we could find something at the top, so might as well keep on going up. Well, I'd say we definitely missed the ball on that one for this evening. Just a hair too late, spent too much time in the editing studio, and uh, missed the light up here at the mountain. But that is a great thing about living in your van. We're up here in the evening, hoping to catch evening light. Missed it, but we're gonna stay the night and uh, be ready to go at 5.30 a.m. for the morning light, which should be banging off right over here on Mount Baker. So in the meantime, for the evening, we're going to uh, kick back here in the van, enjoy some van life up here in this beautiful scene. It's almost winter time, it's in the air, it's gonna get nice and cold tonight. We're actually gonna need the diesel heater to uh, keep warm tonight. Well, I actually got fairly lucky in the fact that about the time the sun disappeared, I looked up and the stars were like out in force. That was actually pretty cool. So I messed around for a little bit doing some astrophotography, set the van up, did some lighting with it. It's always fun experimenting with astrophotography, seeing what you can capture in the stars and light and stuff like that. Because it's always something that you can't see with the naked eye when you start getting into night photography, so that's fun. It's two degrees Celsius outside. Here inside the van, got the diesel heater running. It is 17 degrees Celsius. On the Fahrenheit scale, that's 35 degrees outside, 64 inside. It's nice and cozy in here. So the plan for this evening is just to chill out here inside the van, stay nice and cozy warm. Fall time is in the air, winter time's right around the corner, and I can't tell you how stoked I am to get back out here and start creating some more winter time videos, some more snow camping videos, etc. In fact, just getting up here to the mountain where it's cold and turning the heater on and staying nice and cozy, it brings me right back to last season. So. Super stoked on that. I think what I'm gonna do here is make a nice cup of tea. That'd be the uh, perfect way to go about doing some van life here, getting this winter time season kicked off. <laughs> yes, that right there is the sound of winter time. Super stoked that tea season's back. Here we are, sipping tea, living van life, enjoying it. And I tell you what, this tea smells delicious. This is a Yogi Soothing Caramel Bedtime Tea. Supports a good night's sleep. I wasn't really into much tea previous to uh, last winter. Once I got the jet boil, all of a sudden I found that uh, I used the heck out of the thing and I really enjoyed tea, so it was new for me. Quite enjoyable, actually.
What's your guys' favorite tea? Tell me in the comments down below what your favorite tea is for van life or for watching van life, watching van life videos. You guys gotta have a favorite tea. Anyways, the plan is tonight, get a good night's rest. The alarm is set for 5.45 a.m. Get up well before sunrise. I'm gonna hike out a trail here, do some panoramic shots of Mount Baker. Yeah, anyways, that's the plan. We'll catch you in the morning. Well guys, it is 20 to seven. Uh, when I left the van, it was about 35 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about two degrees Celsius. We're up here at Artist Point. You can see right here behind me, that is Mount Baker. As you can tell, it's in about an alpine glow state right now. Hopefully, we might uh, get lucky and get some light up here for some photos on this here mountain. It's quiet, nothing but a breeze blowing right now. Pretty stoked to be up here right now. And I tell you what, being able to sleep in the van up here sure beats getting up at 3 a.m. to make the uh, hour and a half trek up here from town. So, definitely thankful for van life right now. But right now just waiting for light to start popping you can see right over here down here in the valley over baker lake starting to get a little bit of light popping in there because right now it's pretty widespread clouds we may or may not get light hitting on the mountain up here like everybody always says it's not about the destination it's about the journey so even if we don't get some photos out here this morning at least we put ourselves out here uh, for the experience It's something that's hard to do. It's hard to talk yourself into getting up at 5 45 a.m. And walking out here when the bed's nice and warm, but Just getting out here just experiencing the view being present in the moment That's definitely worth it That's exactly why you need to be in the right spot at the right time when you get that gift of light right at sunrise. That light literally lasted maybe a minute, a minute and a half, it's now dissipated. And there it goes, just disappears like that. <laughs> That does it for this morning's photo session. I'm gonna hike back to the van. The diesel heater is on. Warm up my fingers because my fingers are about to fall off, I think. All right, cook some breakfast. I'm gonna head back there, make some warm tea, make some breakfast, warm these fingers up, and see what the day brings. Check out this view. No, Shuxon back there. This awesome panoramic views. There is a reason they call this Artist Point, that is for sure. Alright guys, see you back at the van.
that's the number I like to see. Nice and warm inside. 22 degrees Celsius, one degree outside. Woo. Good Lord, it is cold. My hands are like falling off, I think. That's all right. Got the diesel heater down here, blowing up. That'll warm it up nice and quickly. Found these in the store the other day. Look like they might be kind of cool for van life coming up here in the winter months. Starbucks Via Instant Lattes. This one's a cafe mocha. I don't know. Let's try it out and see what happens. Smells delicious. Give it a good stir, and just like that, we've got instant latte. For show, sure. that'll warm you up quick right there. Definitely gonna be piping hot though. Okay, breakfast. For this morning, I just wanted to do a simple breakfast. So we're gonna do a good old freeze-dried mountain house meal. This one is a spicy Southwest breakfast hash. It's got potatoes, shredded beef, green chilies, black beans, and corn right here. Twelve ounces of water straight into the bag. I love these things. What you want to do is you give it a good stir. Once you've given it a good stir, you just seal this bag right back up. Then we're going to wait for five minutes, stir it again, wait another four, and we're good to go. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy my coffee drink and enjoy this view out here. That shit right there gives me goosebumps. I love the fact you can just drive your van up here, your home, your house, your way of living. You can park it in a view like this. I tell you what, this right here is a view that money cannot buy you. Definitely thankful for opportunities like this. I think that's the awesome part about this whole YouTube experience is, I feel like you guys are part of this whole adventure. Definitely pretty stoked to be able to sit here and share the view with you guys here on YouTube. <clears throat> I can sit and enjoy this view, but yet still have the warmth of the diesel heater. It's not horrible. I can't say it's my absolute most favorite freeze dried meal, but uh, hey, it's food, it's quick, simple, almost zero cleanup. Cook it right in the bag, throw the bag away when you're done with it, enjoy a hot meal. It's pretty hard to go wrong. Not bad. Not too bad, I've had worse. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the day brings. I'm thinking I might just hang out up here for the day. Fly some drone, maybe even do some fly fishing. There's some good fly fishing spots just right down below here. I don't know, we'll see. Nonetheless, I can think of worse ways to spend a day.
my other favorite things to do up here at Mount Baker. Just so happens to be fly fishing. There happens to be just a cool little fishery down below here. Brook trout are quite abundant down here in the stream and the lakes below. There's not a ton of food for them. In the winter time, they are frozen in. The fish don't get huge, but they are hungry and they're fun to catch. Turns out that it ends up being really good fishing. A simple little fishing adventure while up here in the Alpines. So I figured I would uh, take you guys along for a few casts, see if we can hook into one of these little baby brook trout. They're actually really cool looking even though they're small. Set up my fly rod. We'll do a little bit of hiking. It's beautiful up here. It's a small fishery, but the scenery is pretty epic. It's a pretty cool spot to be casting some flies. We fish this spot quite a bit this summer. Now that it's a little bit cold, it'll be interesting to see how the fish go about biting. One of our favorite flies to use up here is the purple haze. The little brook trout up here in these streams just love these flies. Little parachute dry fly. Easy to spot in the water. These brook trout love them. Just gonna get this thing tied up here. Then we're gonna go for a hike. Let's do this guys. Let's go see if we can find ourselves some alpine brook trout. In the winter time, these fish are completely snowed in. The water's frozen over, there's about 10 feet of snow right here where I'm standing right now. So in the summertime, they feed like crazy. for sure we come down here and catch some fish especially out of this hole this is one of my favorite holes uh, usually about first or second cast every time I come here I got some sort of bite and most of the time a fish on the hook not such the case I think it's because of the uh, fall weather and it's getting cold up here so the fish might be becoming more and more dormant a couple weeks ago this place was going off the hook We'll at least go try the lake next, see what kind of uh, luck we can have there.
Well, so far here in the deeper water, I've been completely skunked. But that could be just because it's the deeper water and the fish might be uh, underneath because it's colder and I'm fishing top water. I'm gonna try one more spot here in the stream in the shallower water and see what we get. It's worth a shot anyways. Hasn't been too many days in my very short fishing career that I've been completely skunked. Hopefully today isn't one of those days. No luck on that one. Let's get down into some of these rapids where we usually catch them. We might just have to mark this one down as a skunk day. Beautiful fishery though. Those brook trout just love to hang out right in there, at least on the summer days. Who knows where they go when it's winter time. Even if the fish are small, at least the scenery pays off. You really do feel like you're in some exotic place when you're fishing these waters. It's pretty cool to know this is where we live. This is the backyard. where they're at. They're in the rapids. Freaking awesome. Hooked him right there on the fly. Okay, let's get this guy back in the water. Another beautiful little brook trout. You see how you just pull them out, out of here, but look at the colors on them. Beautiful. So cool to be up here catching this thing. Such a beautiful scenery. I'm definitely enjoying learning how to fly fish for reasons just like this. Well, sweet. I'm definitely glad that we didn't give up on those deeper waters just to be able to catch you guys a fish, show you guys those cool little brook trout. Definitely glad we came down here and fished uh, this hole. As typically, you can usually pull two, maybe three uh, fish out of each hole. We'll go scope another hole, see if we can uh, 
pull out another one. It's pretty cool. That's a nice size little brook trout right there. Nice size for this stream anyways. Definitely cool. Let this little guy go back. See you little buddy. Thanks for hanging out. Actually really excited that I got to share some fish with you guys. Share this spot. Definitely been a good day of van life up here shooting photos, catching some fish. I think it's about time to hike back up to the van. Maybe brew up some hot tea, warm up a little bit. All right, see you guys at the van. Time for some lunch. Again, keeping it simple for lunchtime today. Today we're gonna have some freeze dried spaghetti because why not? Don't attempt to hold the bag while you pour it in the water. I'm gonna let that sit for four minutes and we're gonna stir it again. Let it sit for eight to nine minutes after that. Anyways. That was actually pretty cool to be able to uh, go catch some fish there for a second. I was a little bit worried that uh, I was going to get skunked on that situation because in the deeper waters where we usually catch them, the fish just weren't active at all. And uh, I'm guessing they probably were just a lot deeper and not feeding on the top, which is what I was fishing top water. I did even notice even when we got to the streams that when I did see the fish in the stream, they were definitely moving a lot slower. They didn't attack the fly as hard as usual, but uh, nonetheless was able to pull a few of those out of the water for you and uh, share those with you guys. Fly fishing is uh, actually something that I just started uh, only a few months ago and I uh, have really been enjoying learning about it and bringing that into van life. It's a great escape from the daily grind of working on the movie. It's uh, great to get out and do some fly fishing. It's quite meditative and relaxing so pretty cool to have that and pretty cool to be able to uh, share that with you guys. So anyways, I'm gonna kick it here for another few minutes and uh, enjoy this mountain house freeze-dried spaghetti. Well, I can tell you it's better than a can of Chef Boyardee, that's for sure. I just love how easy these things are.
All right, guys, it's about time to wrap up this here van adventure. We got out and shot some photos. We went out and did some fishing. Enjoyed this beautiful scenery up here in the Mount Baker wilderness. If you guys like this video, make sure and hit the like button. Leave me your feedback, leave me your comments in the comment section down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell next to the subscribe button. That's going to let you know anytime videos like this are uploaded. For all the new subscribers that have joined on board here in the last few months, thank you so much for becoming part of the channel. For those of you that have been with me for years and years, thank you for the loyalty and the support. I really appreciate it. Guys, if you like seeing the fishing and you want to see more of it, let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, it's something new to my life and it will definitely be part of van life here in the future. All right, guys, I'm going to hit the road, head back down the mountain, do some editing. Peace out. Keep on trucking.